Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm going to talk about Hurricane Nate. Up until an hour or two ago, Hurricane Nate didn't exist. There was a Nate, but it was a tropical storm Nate. And before then, it was tropical disturbance. This uh, storm has intensified greatly, um, and it's moving north, 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 northwest. It's just threading the eye between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba and it's going into the Gulf of Mexico where the water's warm and it's strengthening and it's heading for a landfall on the U.S. Uh, Gulf states. So let's, uh, I'm going to look at the, I'm going to go through various tools and various um, uh, different uh, links and so on, websites, to follow this storm and to give a projection on what I think is going to happen. I think the risks are building that this storm could be, you know, in fact, quite a bit stronger than Category 2 on landfall. But let's, let's have a look at what it's saying. The consensus right now is, you know, strong Category 1 or even Category 2 on landfall. And I think people will be surprised. Uh, this is based on rapid intensification of, of, of previous storms like Harvey and uh, Irma and Maria. You know, this is an exceptional season, and I think the exceptions are going to continue uh, with Nate. So let's get right into, uh, into the analysis. Just straighten up here. Okay, so, so this is my uh, website. Just Google paulbeckwith.net and you see this. This is a recent post. I've uh, produced hundreds of videos and I you can find them on YouTube just by Googling them directly, or you can find them via my website. All of my videos are to educate the public on the risks that we face from abrupt climate change. This is me. Hello. So um, I do all this work on my own time. Uh, so please consider uh, supporting my work with a donation uh, via PayPal on my website. And if you've donated to me in the past, then uh, I thank you very much um, for, for doing that. I, I just want to get the message out to people about the severe risks that we face from abrupt climate change. So let's get right into analyzing this storm. So I need to adjust a little bit here. There we go. Center it a bit. Okay, so if you just okay let's go up a little bit okay so in the search uh, menu if you search for hashtag nate then you get all of the tweets uh, from people that are discussing this so right now nate's 500 miles from the southern coast of the u.s between nate which is now category one 75 miles per hour sustained winds and the coast, there's, there's basically 500 miles of warm ocean. And th that's a lot of room for intensification. Even though this storm is moving fairly fast, 22 miles an hour, uh, if it maintains that, it'll, you know, it sails across the warm water. Um, the storm is organizing more. Um, there's a, a, you can't really see an eye too clearly in the visible radar images. You can in the microwave images and uh, you can't really in the infrared images. There's very deep convection going on, very, very tall clouds, a lot of convection, convective lift. Um, so this storm, here, here's some images. You can scroll down and see all of these images. I mean, this storm is becoming a lot better developed than it was before. You can look at the projections and see what's going on. Uh, but the water temperature is very warm. So this storm is going to be gaining energy as it moves. Uh, let's just see what some of the updates are saying. To get the latest updates, you can see, we'll look at this, how this is developing, but um, it's, uh, it, is rare, it is moving extremely fast. Um, so, you know, people need to, to treat this storm as a very serious storm. Uh, four states declaring state of emergency as Nate approaches. So, so this is uh, you know this is not a surprise. Um, 
There's other hashtags for tracking this storm. So this is, for example, uh, Hurricane Nate, hashtag Hurricane Nate. Um, not everybody know, you know, puts all the hashtags for like, like you can put all the, ha both, both hashtags, Hurricane Nate, Nate, you know, and any other hashtags that you find for this. Uh, but generally it's good to monitor each different one if you want to see what's really going on. So this is showing the storm intensifying here. This is enhanced uh, radar. Um, okay, so these are the best ways to see it. Now let's look at what happened. This is the, if you Google National Hurricane Center NHC.NOAA, you get this site. And if you, if you look at the cone, warnings the cone, then you get this image here. And this is the 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time image, which would be 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And what you can see is, you can see that this storm wasn't expected to be a hurricane until it got almost to the coast. Okay, the winds were 65 miles per hour at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay, now if you go to the 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 10 p.m. Central Daylight Time, you can see that the projection was it would be a hurricane sooner. And what turns out is that here at 11.30 p.m., just after this um, came out at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 11.30, um, it became Hurricane Nate. The sustained winds jumped from 70 miles per hour to 75 miles an hour, giving it hurricane status. So this is a storm that is rapidly intensifying. Already we're at a hurricane there, which is even, so, you know, half an hour after this forecast came out, it was deemed basically too conservative. Okay, so we've got a hurricane category one here. The question is, is, you know, will it become, will it be a one here? Um, the water is very warm. The only way it would be stay one here is if there's shear, you know, it amplifies, shear breaks it apart a bit, and then it, you know, hovers, but it doesn't look like there's significant shear to do that. So it's going to be, it looks like at least a category two here. But if you look at some other storms and how quickly they've intensified, uh, they've become category one to almost a full, fully blown category three, category four higher storm in crossing this distance. But this storm is going 22 miles an hour. If it was going 10 miles an hour, it would be a much bigger concern of, of because it would have double the time before it hits the coastline, but it's going at 22. So that speed is crucial. Um, also, the seawater temperature is very warm and it's very warm down to depth. If it was just warm on the surface, then a fast moving storm like that wouldn't have time to churn up cold water from deep below to self quench. But the water is very warm deeper down. So even, you know, so, so there's, there's no way it's gonna be, there's gonna be a self quenching if it's going 22 miles an hour. If even it slows down to 10, you know, and doubles the time it's in the Gulf here, that would give it a lot more time to intensify. So where it's good that it's going so fast right now, that will perhaps limit the intensity it can amplify up to before it reaches landfall. So this is the heat content um, in the ocean. So red is high, this is kilojoules per square centimeter sea sur of surface area. Um, and as we go down, there's less and less heat. So it's been going through hot areas and amplified. It's not quite on this path, it's more over here a bit. Um, if it was on this path, then it goes through some areas where there's not a lot of amplification. If it's tracking along this path here, then it's getting a lot of amplification all the way along. So if the path moves a little bit eastward, it's going to amplify more as it tracks across the Gulf than if it was on this path that's shown here. This um, is from a blog. If you Google weather underground or wonderground and look at the blog, this was the most recent post here on how strengthening Nate is heading into the Gulf. Okay, so so this is an image here. This is a microwave image and you can see the eye here. This was taken at 7.45 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. You can see the eye here um, and, uh, and as, as the storm is moving up. You can also see a central area here. So the storm is quite disorganized here. Um, 
This is an updated Im This is an image in the infrared a bit later showing these deep convection bands here and then the heat content and then the impact. So um, because there's a large forward speed, um, if the storm was going 100 miles, if the storm was um, circling at 90 miles an hour, the winds here, then because the uh, forward speed is 20 miles an hour, it'll be 110 on this side, it'll be 70 on this side. That's a huge difference because the damage from a storm varies as the velocity to the 2.7, uh, to the power 2.7, not quite three, power three, as in the case of power generated from wind turbines. So this is the, dre the dreaded right quadrant where the storm surge is greatest. So let's have a look at um, what's going on from Earth Null School. So if you just Google Earth Null School and we're, we've got air, surface, winds, and this is what we see here. This is what we see now. Um, this, if you go back and look at what happened earlier, the eye was more elongated, the eye is tightening up. Um, this is the surface winds. Let's have a look at the jet streams at 250 millibar, which tend to guide storms. Okay, so here we are here, so that we expect as we come across, eventually we're pulled into these stronger winds here, and we're gonna see um, we're going to see Nate uh, do a right turn or at least veer to the right. So where it begins to turn is very important for where it has landfall. If it's late here, it can come across New Orleans and it, otherwise it can come off Biloxi and, and, or even it could veer off and, and come over towards Florida. This is a bit of a wild card, um, these winds. Um, and what we can see is we can, if we look at the wind speed here, we can see 34 kilometers an hour. And as we go down, um, this is about halfway down through the atmosphere, 48 kilometers an hour, go down a bit more, 700. You can see how this speed varies and you can see, get an idea for what the wind shear is like. Um, and one of the points is, is that the winds are a lot faster right now at slightly higher elevation. So let's go back down to the surface. Um, the other thing we want to look at is ocean. These are the ocean waves. So we can see what the waves are here. This is in meters. You can click this, that's in feet. Um, and you can kind of see, you know, it's in the right quadrant where the waves are the, are the largest. Um, the other thing that we can look at is sea surface temperature. So here's the sea surface temperature. Uh, we can click on this. So anything over 80 and the storm is going to gain strength. So we've got 85, almost all the way, 84, almost all the way in. This whole basin is, there's 83. This whole basin is at least, you know, pretty much three to five degrees Fahrenheit warmer than the minimum required to amplify storms. So the storm is going to intensify here. The only thing that would perhaps um, mitigate the, that is the shear winds, if the shear winds develop. This is sea surface temperature anomaly. So the track of the storm is, is to come up here. There's a bit of a colder pool here. This is based on the temperature relative to the long-term average, but most of the water is warmer by up to a degree and a half, half a degree sort of thing, warmer than normal. So this is bad news for intensifying the storm. Like I said, the forward motion is good news. Now let's go back to the air and now let's go forward in time. So three hours, this is from the GFS model and this, this is three hours more and three hours more. And you can see the eye is well developed there. Um, the eye is well developed there, and this is the model showing it coming up and then hitting landfall. Um, now, if it hit here, this would be a worst case scenario for the New Orleans area because this is the right front quadrant that would bring the highest storm surge up here. So it's very important to follow these and to track these and to see what's happening with this storm. So hopefully I've given you the tools to allow you to do that. Um, so this is not looking good that, that Nate is intensifying so quickly. Looks like it'll be bigger than 